Please, won't you pray with me? May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts together find their way into the heart of God this morning. Amen. So, beloved, a lot can happen in a year. Am I right? A lot can happen in a year. And the story never ends, not even after the agony of suffering or the finality of death. Death does not claim us, Easter people. Life does. Death does not claim us. Love does. 525,600 minutes measure in what? Love. Love. Alleluia, he is risen with his wounds still intact. And so have all of we, all of us. Resurrection is not always death and glory. Sometimes it's a gradual restoration. It takes a while for the vaccines to get distributed, for the hospital numbers to decline, for our fear to lessen, for us to feel comfortable returning to what used to be familiar for it all to sink in. And there is still grief for all that we have lost along the way. If you're not in a hallelujah place right now this Easter, you are not alone and it's okay. Mary wasn't in a hallelujah place either that morning. While it was still dark, Mary goes to the tomb early on the first day of the week. Mary goes to tend to the body of her teacher, her Lord, her friend. And she had watched him die, a gruesome, shocking death at the foot of the cross just two days earlier. And she went to do what she longed to do as he suffered and died, to touch him and to hold him. She went to tenderly rub his body with spices and perfume. And she arrives and she sees that the stone is rolled away, sees that his body is missing. So on top of the fact that her teacher, her Lord, her friend dies and lies cold in the grave, she is convinced also that a robber has come and stolen the body. And she runs to tell Simon and Peter and the beloved disciple, Simon Peter, Peter and the beloved disciple, and the two men come back to the tomb with her. They step inside, they look around, and they confirm her fears, right? He was taken. And they do not get it. They don't understand the scripture that says that he will rise from the dead, or they don't believe it. Who knows? But they are scared and sad. And so they leave Mary, and they leave her alone there, and they go back to their homes. And she, she stays. She is not afraid to bear witness to suffering, just like she is not afraid to grieve. And while it is still dark, she weeps. She wonders how she can go on. She wonders what happened to the life she used to know. She grieves at the failure of the leaders to act in time. She mourns all she cannot touch. She mourns the very real deaths all around her. She mourns her own isolation. She grieves the death of a dream she had for the world most of all. While it is still dark, it is hard to see that there are indeed angels flanking the tomb, that God is still there, even in the depths of our despair. And finally, an angel sitting at the grave says to Mary, Woman, why are you weeping? It seems like everyone in the account of the resurrection and the Gospel of John keeps asking Mary why she is weeping and calling her woman like it's a bad word. If I were Mary, I would find that really annoying. We often denigrate displays of sadness or grief as though feeling emotion is a sign of weakness or that feeling emotion is a sign of weakness inherent in the condition of being female, right? 
We use a woman's tendency to display the emotions of grief or empathy as a legitimate reason not to vote for them for president or promote them to CEO or let them lead in the church. The men in the Gospels are prone to being also destructively emotional, though, especially on this beautiful, terrible week in Jerusalem. Men's emotions were on full display in the form of completely uncontrolled rage as they acted out vengeance upon Jesus' body with whip and fist and nails and taunts. Men's emotions were on full display in the form of fear as his followers abandoned him and hid, leaving only the women to sit at the foot of the cross and watch his life slowly drain from his body as he called out for his mama. But there is a man whose emotions are on full display. It is Jesus himself who admits thirst, who cries out to God, who forgives, who surrenders to death as he hung on his cross. What is a true show of strength, beloved? Vulnerability or violence? Woman, why are you weeping, the angels ask. They've taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him, she retorts. I am strong enough to stay awake, to bear witness to suffering, and then I am able to express my grief in healthy ways. That's why. That's why I'm weeping. Maybe what she should have said is, why aren't you weeping? Jesus appears to Mary next, and they are in the garden alone. She supposes him to be the gardener. He must have looked like a gardener, dirt under his nails from his own grave that he managed to claw his way out of. Woman, why are you weeping, he too asks. He has a different reason for asking. Everything has changed, and still you can't see it. She demands with the same passion, if you have taken away my Lord, tell me where he is. I will take him. I want him back. I want my life back. And he says her name in that moment, Mary, which is when she finally recognizes him. Teacher, she says. While it is dark, it is hard to see that the hand reaching out is the hand of God. It is hard to believe in the rising, even if it's right in front of you calling your name. And Mary knows that it is him because he speaks her name. He has gotten up and walked away. He has triumphed over even death. He is risen indeed. Her body aches to touch his wounded places, to hug him, to hold him. But he tells her, don't hold on to me. What shall we hold on to then? I imagine her demanding, because she is a shameless woman. Tell them I have seen the Lord. Proclaim love's dominion over death. And so she runs to tell the others the good news. She runs to testify to the light, even when it is still dark. I have seen the Lord. I have seen the Lord. In this emotional proclamation, a young, unafraid woman becomes the first preacher of the gospel. I have a congregant whose name is Lily, Lily grew up in this church, and she shares a favorite scripture from Ecclesiastes with her father of blessed memory, His name is Jim Harper. When I, offici- when I officiated her wedding to her beloved Kevin, Jim was there to walk her down the aisle, and we read, For everything there is a season and a time for every purpose under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die a time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, 
a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to seek and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to cast away, a time to rend and a time to sow, a time to keep silence and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. As I blessed their marriage, I said, for everything there is a season and a time for every purpose under heaven, and today is a time to plant, a time to dance, a time to embrace, a time to sow, a time to love. At her beloved father Jim's funeral the following August, I read, I read that same passage from Ecclesiastes and said, for everything there is a season and a purpose for every matter under heaven, today is a time to mourn, a time to weep, a time to break down and build up again, a time to love. It is also a time to pluck up what has been planted for Jim's roots go deep into the soil, deep into the heart of this little town in Sterling, deep into the precious community, the church community, this beautiful family and this extended family. The love he has planted here, I said, will endure forever. And when Lily gave birth just three weeks ago in the middle of this still dark world to a baby named for her dad, Jameson Paul, she sent me a picture of his perfect, snuggly, scrunched up newbornness with this text. For everything there is a season and a time for every purpose under heaven. A time to be born. The love Jim has planted here will endure forever. And like Mary, I wept. I wept because in every season and for every purpose under heaven, it is always a time to love. I wept because Lily is a young woman unafraid to claim the gospel message while it is still dark. I wept because resurrection is just as true as death is. I wept because God is knit together in the sacred darkness of the wombs of their mothers, even now. I wept because I have seen the Lord, I have seen the Lord, and his name is love, and what a beautiful name it is. So beloved, have the courage and strength to weep for all we have lost this year, and don't hold on to death. Be unafraid to proclaim life, especially now. Where it is dark, be the light. Make sure that love's redeeming work is always and forever done. Amen.